Hey guys, we're live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. We had a little technical difficulty, but we're here now. We're here. And we're here with a great guest. Teal Wicks, Teal Wicks is here. Who is fantastic on this new recording, The Ballad of Little Joe, which we're going to talk about. So and I think that the Twickies, is that what they're called? The Twickies are watching. Oh. She has her own fan name. I can't name keep base. track of a uh, fan name. This, this is a special group of dedicated What are Live people? at Five fans called? Twickies today. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Beth, big news just broke breaking minutes ago. Breaking news. Breaking news. The boys in the band is coming to Broadway for the first time ever. This is the 1968 play. By Mark Crowley. Landmark. A landmark, landmark gay play. Groundbreaking, gay, gay drama. Putting gay lives on the stage for the first time, really. Yep. In 1968, this is pre-Stonewall. Um, and it, l listen to this cast. Are you ready? Oh, my God. You're this not is, ready. This is the crazy cast. You're not ready. Jim Parsons. Oh, first of all, I should say, this is Ryan Murphy producing yes. with David Stone. And we reported before that Ryan Murphy had this dream of bringing a 50th, right? 50th, yes, anniversary, 50th anniversary production, which correct. you just said, uh, to Broadway. And he brought a lot of his friends with him. Who's coming? Okay. Jim Parsons. Zachary Quinto. Matt Bomer, are you hyperventilating yet? Andrew oh. Rannells, Robin DeJesus, Brian Hutchison, Michael Benjamin Washington, and Tuck Watkins. And here's my favorite part. The role of cowboy remains to be cast. Do you know who cowboy is? No. Cowboy is the hustler. <laughs> I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. So Joe Mantello is directing. Uh-huh. 15 week engagement at the Booth Theater starting April 30th through August 12th. So the summer of Boys in the Band. This sounds like uh, this Tony amazing. Award bait. That's what this is. Tony bait. But it's post-Tony cutoff, right? Or maybe, it is? Or is it? We don't know when the Tony cutoff is. April 30th? Is. April 30th is the preview date. Oh. I don't know. Hmm. That'd be weird. It would be weird, but maybe it's Tony bait. I don't know. Maybe we don't know. They know what they're doing, Ryan Murphy and David Stone. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a huge, huge production. And it takes place at a birthday party. Right. So and there's a lot of drinking and a lot of issues. Drinking and issues. <laughs> and great, great <laughs> If you're not characters. hooked now... <laughs> and this, of course, was written by Mark Crowley, right? Mark did Crowley. Did you say that, Mark I did Crowley? did say that, yes. Yeah, and it's, it's a really a great place. And there have been a lot of off-Broadway revivals, but this is the first time on Broadway. First time on Broadway. Amazing. Yeah. 50 years later. You know what else is exciting? Tell us. Moulin Rouge. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. I feel like I've been dreaming of Moulin Rouge. We Since talked about this yesterday out. because there is a lab that's what they, they call them now. They used to call them workshops. Lab. There's a lab happening, um, which means that they're doing it like in, in a rehearsal room. For, and we uh, reported yesterday that Aaron Tveit and Karen Olivo oh, are currently in the rehearsal room playing Satine and Christian. Uh, Christian, is that right? Yeah. Why am I having a blank? Christian. Anyway. It says it right there. So then today they announced that the show is really coming. So... Uh, next summer at the Colonial Theater, which Emerson Colonial Theater now, uh, Emerson College now. Bought the theater. Yeah, it bought the theater. This is a classic, beautiful theater in Boston, by the way, where a lot of shows had pre-Broadway tryouts, including Grand Hotel, my I favorite musical. I knew you would mention that. I had to. Yes. Uh, a great ladies' room, right? Very famous. That's well, inside, it'll be in a inside bus joke. Uh, anyway, Malone was just happening there next summer, and then it's a pre-Broadway engagement, so this is where it's all going to launch. And, um, of course, John Logan is writing the book. Alex Timbers directing. Choreography by Sonia Taya, who I think is a big TV choreographer. She does, like, those So You Think You Can Dance, I think. Um, anyway, it's going to be amazing. We don't have any news for Broadway yet. There's no date. There's no theater. There's no casting. So calm down. <laughs> we don't know who's in the Boston or Broadway cast yet. But it's going to be super exciting. Very exciting. Okay, so we do have some casting now. Belle Poli. Who was in Arcadia? Am I saying the right thing? Yeah. Was it Arcadia? Arcadia on Broadway, Tom Stoppard. Yeah, yeah. She is playing the role of Dawn. I don't say Stoppard. I don't know. I always forget to do Stoppard. that. It's, it's Stoppard. Stoppard. It depends just where like, you're from. Just Images like what, what's me. the other one you always correct me on? John Lithgow. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Exactly ladies what and I'm gentlemen. Lithgow. Let me. It's not Lithgow. It's no, Lithgow. 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 We're going to go back to the story. Sorry. Bill Polly. <laughs> and watch someone correct me that it's Polly, but I'm just going to go with Polly. She is starring as Dawn in Kenny Lonergan's Lobby Hero. This is the revival on Broadway that's reopening the Helen Hayes, which is being refurbished. Uh, directed by Trip Coleman. This will be in March, March 1st, opening March 26th. And she will be joining the previously announced Michael Cera, Chris Evans, and Brian Terry Henry. I loved this play when it first came out, and so did you. You're right, I did. You're right. You know yeah. what else I love? Uh, Thanksgiving Day Parades. Good happen. segue, Paul. It's really because smooth. it reminded me of my childhood because you would get up early and you have to get up really early. So all the Broadway stuff happened in the beginning uh, on the Macy's Parade. But there are two parades now. And so every year we like find out who's, who's on which one, who's on first. And so we found out that the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will have Dear Evan Hansen, Once on This Island, Anastasia and SpongeBob SquarePants, and the Radio City Rockettes, naturally. 
And that will happen 9 a.m. until noon. But of course, you really have to watch between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. if you want to see the Broadway. And this is the NBC one, right? Yeah, this is NBC. But thankfully, now there's DVR, so you actually don't have to wake up <laughs> early to watch this. You could just tape it. And YouTube and things like that that I didn't have for my childhood. <laughs> uh, and Matt Lauer, Savannah Guthrie, and Al Roker will, of course, be on there. And then CBS has their own coverage of the parade, which will feature Waitress and Come From Away. So far. Maybe more. We'll see Maybe what more. happens. Okay, so the American Songbook series has announced their slate of... And there's so many Broadway people that I just made a huge list. This is going to play Lincoln Center's Apple Room in 2018. Is so it Apple or Appel? Appel? I don't really know. Let's go. It's Lithgow Appel Room. Okay. Uh, so this, okay, first of all, Aaron Tveit oh. will be there on February 9th. We can't go five minutes without mentioning Aaron Tveit. Aaron, I think a little bell goes off whenever we say his name. He's like, <laughs> his, his head's ringing. <laughs> Charlie and the Char Chocolate Factory's Jackie Hoffman, also a former Broadway.com vlogger. She's too fancy for us now, ever now since her Emmy nomination. Yeah, Mama Cita. Remember when we used to get to get interviews with her? I know, that's a long we time ago. We love you, Jackie. We love you, Jackie. She was she just on show people. Her. But anyway. She, um, she's watching right now. Hi, Jackie. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, January 25th at 8.30. And Tony winner Stu of Passing Strange oh. fame oh. with Stu Heidi Rodewald. His partner for Passing Strange will be on stage on February 7th at 8.30. Mm -hmm. Rachel Bloom and Adam Schlesinger, the team behind Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, everyone loves that show, will be there February 10th at 8.30. These are all at 8.30. I don't know why I keep on saying it. Uh, Scott Frankel and Michael Corey, who wrote War Paint and Great Gardens, mm. will be joined by Julian Ovenden and Tony winner Kelly O'Hara Wow! on February 17th. Isn't that a great lineup? That's a great lineup. It's a great lineup. Uh, also happening tonight, Meteor Shower. Yay, happy previews. first preview happy to Meteor booth. Shower. Yeah. Amy Schumer is Amy now a Broadway Schumer. star, officially, in about f three hours. Yeah. What, when do you become a Broadway star? When first when you preview? Open, or opening, I think. opening night? I don't know. When, let's don't take know. a poll. Let us know when you come, become a Broadway star. Anyway, it's going to be great. Yeah, so the Twickies are getting anxious, so why should you okay. get out of here? Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Teal Wicks. Broadway's Come From Away is a Best Musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. And all that jazz, come on babe, I know a whoopee spot Where the gin is cold but the piano's hot It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl And all that jazz That jazz Downton Abbey's Elizabeth McGovern is superb in Time and the Conways this plush and haunting revival is freshly gripping. A beautifully realized family drama, profound and timely. Time and the Conways. Hey Conway. guys, we are back with Teal Wicks. Hello, Teal Wicks. Hi, hi, hi. Ooh. Wearing a uh, signature green. We've seen you in green before. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I mean, it's times. a good color. It's, she's pretty. It's fall. Uh, actually, you know, this was uh, Wick. This is like Wicked Anniversary Week. Yeah, you, you're a it former Alphaba. Yeah, you've played Alphaba in a lot of places. I have. Yeah, three different towns. Yeah. Los Angeles, San Francisco, and the Broadway. Yeah, you're a good Alphaba. I, li I like your Alphaba. And you do look good in green. So I do. you gave us a little hint of it. What yeah. do you do on the anniversary of Wicked? Do you do anything special um, when you're not in the show anymore? But do you <laughs> light a candle for Alphaba? I, light, I go, to a safe go to a safe space <laughs> and, um, you know, have a little meditation. No, I usually, honestly, just go through, I look for pictures. Uh, I go, uh, you know, inst oh, you know. You have to post yeah, on you got to do some social media. Yeah, yeah. And as time goes on, there's a lot of really funny pictures. Uh -huh. And then now, because it's been a while since I've been in yeah. the Wicked, there's yeah. a lot of um, like Green Witch, like yeah. photo ops and uh -huh. like little post right. show pics. So you've gone on to uh, some great things, including you this the ballad now the ballad of, ballad of Little Joe. The ballad of Little this Joe. This is a brand new cast recording yeah. uh, that the musical company put out. And this was a production you did, actually, at Two River Theater in yeah. New Jersey, right? Yeah. When did you do the show? Uh, it was just this summer, or spring, or it was just... Recently. Recently. This year. A few months it ago. It was warm. It got warm at one point, and I went to the beach. So, summer, 
This is a musical that has been around for a while. This this musical, yeah, yeah the, oh I, I heard about yeah. this musical first a, a while ago, and they kind of rebooted it, brought it back, and mm -hmm. did this new production. Everybody loved it. Yeah, got great did. reviews. Oh my god, it's. The music's amazing. Um, I, Mike I Reed. love the story. Mike Reed, who if you don't know who that is, he is an ex-pro NFL football player and wrote What? I Can't Make You Love Me. What? Oh, you know that wow. that really stupid song that nobody likes. It's, it's are One you, of my the God? best freaking like love ballads, yes. country slash pop rock, whatever. I've spent a lot of nights with candles on that song. Right, funny, it's right, a man. Good song. Yeah. Stop laughing so, at me, Matt Roden. So um, if that's a reason so to get the album, that. I mean that's a commercial. That. There should be a sticker on here. Yeah. That says this guy wrote. <laughs> this I guy can't wrote make you love me. That song that makes you cry. What's your best version of? What's your favorite uh, rendition of that? Oh, just Bonnie Raitt. Yeah, well, I mean, Bonnie Raitt all the time. Yeah, I know, classic, it's classic. But there's a lot of good versions. Uh, so he wrote the music. So he wrote the music. With, uh, and then he wrote lyrics, Sarah Schlesinger, right? Yep, and then they Sarah wrote the book together. Yep, they did. Um, and so they must be happy that this is now a recording and that it's... I think so. Yeah. I be mean, it's pretty rare for a regional production of a musical yeah. to put out a cast album. Yeah. So I think everybody... I mean, I don't know. It's been through, as you said, it's been going on for a while. It's It started at Steppenwolf back... Almost 20 years ago, right. 17 years ago. And yeah, like was, 2000, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh, I remember. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. 17 years ago. <laughs> yeah, we were in grade school. Yeah, right? Um, mm -hmm. Totally. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so they've been really working on it. Yeah. And what, so to let, tell everyone about this. And it's based on a movie, by the way. I yes. remember the movie, when the movie came out, indie yeah. movie. Um, what is, so what's the story of it? What, who is okay. Little Joe? What's um, happening? Okay, it's like gosh. in the West, right? Yeah. I, I need to figure out how to explain this within like, you know, five seconds, like a five second you, you don't, There's not a five second limit. All you right. can take 15 ten. seconds. I'll take 10. <laughs> so it's um, in the late 1800s after the gold rush. Um, and it's a story of there is this woman or she's, she's young uh, from Boston who basically has a child out of wedlock and decides to try to go out west to San Francisco to start fresh and then have her son come and meet her there when she's sort of been like, I've established myself yeah. here. I can be who I want to be mm -hmm. in this land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it's so far from Boston that you go out west and you are basically can be whoever you want to be because nobody, yeah. there's no way to stay in touch with anybody. Right. It takes like six right. months to get a letter. Like Yeah, there's no iPhone coast to coast. people. There's yeah, no, no iPhone. Yeah, there's no messaging, no, no. texting. It's different. So she heads out to the West and gets sort of derailed. She, she's on a train. We have a train song. It's a great song. Um, <laughs> she gets, not the train isn't derailed, but she basically, stuff happens, and she ends up in Idaho, in the silver mining town in Idaho, and some unfortunate things happen to her, and she decides the only way to survive and get by is to uh, disguise herself as a man. And what song does she sing at that point? Well, there's this song called Everything That Touched Her that's very dramatic oh, and fun. Oh, Track 12. Track yeah, 12. it's real. Uh-huh. It's, 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 you know, big. Wow, that, that song, that's, I mean, it's a powerful title. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. mean, hmm. But so she decides to disguise herself and live as a man and ends up living in this silver mining town for 15, 18 years. I forget exactly how long right. it is in our... And she, months. yeah, and she... Decides to leave her son with her sister because he's better off there, and she lives believably in this town forever. And in the re it's based on a real woman named Josephine wow. Monahan, and yeah, and so in the real life, she he was there for a long time, Joe Monahan, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until she passed away, and they went to prepare the body that they realized it was a woman. Shut up. Our story takes a little darker. That's crazy. Turn. They didn't find out until she died. He yeah, died. Yeah. Oh, until what? He, yeah, until she he died. That's amazing. How'd yeah. you look as a boy? I think I looked really great. <laughs> I had a really great wig. I was like, I'm gonna cut off all my hair. I like not having to wear makeup. It was nice to do a show where I don't have to wear like corsets and bustles oh, and like yeah. I've had yeah. a lot of those. Yeah. I like a period piece, but man, those costumes. Wow, are... what a cool story. Yeah, so it's... And there's three finales. Finale part one, part two, and part <laughs> oh my three. God, there's so many finales. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot happens. If you saw, there's like, there's like a fire. Oh, nice. And there's a death, and there's a funeral, and then there's like, hey, also you have to have the song where we all come together, and we're like, hey guys, this is our story. And that song called what? Uh, what song is that? It's probably just the finale finale. Oh, finale finale. The final finale. I love looking at just I love just looking at titles. Oh, there's a train song, you're right. You weren't yeah. lying. And there's also a song called Life exclamation point. Yes. Yeah. That is your that I is the song. I want the that's Wizard the I and want I song. song. Yeah, that's like the Wizard and I song. I love it. 
I kind of have like as I was going through it because there were a few other wicked. Is there a Defying Gravity song or is uh, it a, um, Defying Gravity song? Is probably maybe everything that touched her. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. And then and no good deed. Is there a no well, good deed? Yeah. <laughs> Like it's its own thing. Like, Everything's yeah, not Yeah, there's a it. there's a mid yeah, and there's uh, not really a for good. There's like a for good solo. Uh, okay. Kind uh-huh, of. Uh huh. I'm into that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, everything. You don't need the other girl. No. No. I think there's everything. No Glinda yeah. In this. Every musical arc, you can like have landmark spots that correlate with a wicked song. Right. And a wicked track. <laughs> and by the way, if you look through the be like, beautiful, this is the shit song. This is the, the way, Emerald lyrics. City. I love lyrics. I love oh to God. read the lyrics. Remember when, back in the days when we used to d- actually look at the get book. It's so exciting. Soundtracks and there's and photos read. of shirtless guys. There's shirtless guys in the show. There's some attractive men in our show. Right. So this is exciting that they made this. Yeah. I'm sure Yay. when you you know I'm sure you didn't see that coming. It's a great, no. and a nice cast yeah. recording. It to was get. amazing. And now, uh, you know, of course, cast recordings mean that shows live on and that people yeah. can produce shows. And I hope so. Yeah. And we're doing a concert. We're doing oh, yeah? an album release when concert. Is it is November 12th. Okay. At 54 Below. I want to go to at that. At 9.30. I want to go. And if you go, you get a free album. What? Oh. So your what? 54 Below ticket gets you a concert wow. and a cast album. That's really so great. Come, Are you going to sing fun. everything that touched her? I actually don't know if we're doing that song. Which... Life exclamation point. We're doing life exclamation point. Finale points. three. We're doing the train song. <laughs> We're doing finale three. <laughs> That's so you cool. You gotta end it. And the album comes out that week too. Yeah, the album comes out the tenth, November tenth, I think. That's what I had in my it's head. It's all November. It's all November. It's all. It, yeah, it's like Why? it's good Why not? Uh, holiday it's good time. time. Good. Yes, for the holidays. Um, can I just because I love to mention this? Can I just say yeah. how much I love doing Carousel? Thank you. You were in the Carousel production that I saw at Good Speed you, yes, with I was. Um, James Snyder. Just James Snyder. Yes, and it was fantastic. So I just, I, I just really like that. And uh, you're wonderful in Jekyll and Hyde. You're Thanks. wonderful. You're, you're very talented. I try. What do you want to do? Like, Tell everybody your, else. What else hey do you want to do? Like, do you have any dreams? Any? Uh... I have all the dreams. I want to be on permanent vacation. I also <laughs> want a Tony Award. <laughs> I also want a film. Oh. That I want a musical film that has something to do with, like Ameri- like road tripping America, and is all like kind of Americana folk music. I don't know who's gonna that's, write wait, it. That's but, very specific. But I want it. Are you writing this m- no. road movie musical? No, but I'm pitching it. It's anybody. <laughs> Matt Bring Roden it. and I are working on a um, a yacht oh. rock musical. Oh my god. Yeah, so we'll we'll let you know if there's any auditions what? for that. Okay, thanks. We just started working on it one night. Can, anyway. I, can someone clarify exactly what, like, what mu- uh, artists fall into the yacht rock category? Oh, it's, mu- oh. it's music that men in their fifties love. No. Okay. And Matt Roden. No. Like, is Jimmy um, Buffett it, rock, it's, yacht it's, rock? It's uh, mid seventies no. to early eighties. Male. Oh. It's male driven. There's okay. a great serious XM Simon? station. Sure. Like some of his like. Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald. Yeah. Okay. The Got Jimmy it. Buffett musical might take some of the thunder away from us. Anyway, that was an aside, but I'm I'm into your <laughs> I'm into your uh, road trip musical. All right, good. Sure. I know. There's a there's a song by William Finn called Hitchhiking Across America. Yes, I do know that. Do you know song. that song? Mm-hmm. I don't know if that would really fit. I think it's about like a gay guy cruising yeah. on the streets of America. I anyway. mean, I did play a man. Well, right. I played a woman she can playing do all kinds a man. Of things. All and I got away of... with it, so <laughs> I don't know. I shaved my head for a film. <laughs> for a good I'm role. Like just Throwing myself oh, I'm sorry. I've been there. ignoring the oh, questions. Cool. I'm so sorry. I was so blinded by your beauty. Jeffrey Kerr, um, who's a regular viewer, said, I hated Moulin Rouge, but we're not addressing oh, that. Wait. That's a ridiculous opinion. That movie. That's an, a ridiculous opinion. Uh, Armin said, You're one of my one of the favorite alphabas. Um, oh, Alex, who was the first Alfie Glinda pair you saw? Oh, as an audience um, member. <clears throat> Idina Menzel and um, Jennifer Laura Thompson. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That was real fun. That was yeah. my first time, and I will never forget. J-Law. It was J. She J. She's J. Law. Uh, J. Law. I call J-L-T. her that. Why can't I call her that? I That's don't what know. I call her. J. Law. L. A. U. Great. I love yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think that was my second time in New York. I don't know. Maybe I'm lying. But I was in New York, and my dad and I tried for a lot of tickets a few times, and we finally won, and it was front row, and I was just like. She's yeah. one of the tallest Glindas, I think. Sure. <laughs> I believe you. I've had a tall Glinda. Uh, Erin yeah. Mackey, she's tall. Oh, yeah, like you're, right, same height. you're right. I, I know, I know. The, All right, sorry. It, it went <laughs> sorry, I ruined your joke. Was it a joke? Uh, Jim, Jim said, Teal, is it a burden being so intensely gorgeous? 
<laughs> do you have any um do you have any beauty <laughs> okay, regimen you want to share or how you stay looking good? Um well, leaving Southern California and moving to New York City helped m me embrace fair skin and not trying to be tan anymore. Where which, in California? Well, I grew up in Sacramento, but I went to school at UC Irvine right. down in the OC and literally lived in Huntington Beach, Newport Beach. Are you for a few like years. truly like a California girl? Do you feel I, like Yes, but I'm more of the like NorCal forests, mountains. Uh -huh. um, right. Yeah. That. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's very, that's very little Joe. That is very, yeah. I love me some Bringing mountains. Bringing it back to the topic at hand. Mm -hmm. And I, I was doing, oh my God, I'm sorry if this is boring. I nope. get an, I become a nerd when I do doing shows. I love doing research and all uh -huh. that stuff. So I started looking back into the gold rush and I forgot that the gold rush literally started in my hometown of Sacramento. Oh my God. Like my, that's where it like exploded. Wow. So. The gold rush is kind of crazy. It's a crazy piece oh, of history. Oh, it's insane. Yeah. The, it was just, was just like no man's land. Like, people this, were just yeah. doing whatever they wanted. Yeah. Anyways. It'd yeah. be interesting if that if there was like a new gold rush, like if somebody found like some area. It's, it's called that, social no. media. I know. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be some natural resource. Wow, we're getting dark and um, Alec wants to know, did yes. you ever have a new a no fly show, which I think means when Alphabet doesn't Alphabet doesn't go fly. In the air. Yeah, I had a few. Yeah. I had I, when we were in San Francisco, I think there was like a month where it happened almost once a week. I feel bad to say that, but and you just I think stay they were on just, ground level. You stay on ground level and you just have to get out of the thing. You go to the very edge of the front of the stage and just belt your heart oh. out and the rest of the cast are literally all of everybody who's like the witch hunters and they're like get yeah. her they literally get on the floor and uh -huh. are like laying there and being like no she's flying it's <laughs> it's <laughs> underwhelming and you literally sing your face off because you're like i have to do something to right. make them think that it's i'm bigger, flying it's a bigger moment <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I feel like the ensemble should all jump onto the into the audience, maybe, and then they're looking up from the audience. They really should. That might be a. That's let's, just. A, let's do that. Don't do that without permission, by the way. Uh, any audition horror stories? Final question, Sarah. Oh my God. Are you good at auditioning? I don't. I don't know. Probably not, because there's a lot of jobs that I was like, oh, I'm totally gonna get this, Nailed and then didn't. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, I did have one. I remember I had a a a, a dance callback, which. I don't really dance. I used to kind of dance, but I sort of stopped because I haven't had to for a while. But it was, a, it was for the role. You needed to dance, and it was a dance call. And I was so sick, and literally was at the um, emergency walk-in clinic oh. in the morning before, and I was on some um, meds to help me. Uh -oh. And I was doing. I think I was in Wicked at the time, so I couldn't go do my show because I was that ill. And I remember spending the whole dance call back waiting to just puke in the trash. Wow. And so it was not, I didn't get that job. Wow. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. But you know so what? what we do. You've it's, actually it's done hard. well. You've done well. So uh, I, I, favorite Americana group. Oh, Elliot, do you have a favorite oh, Americana, Americana group? Oh, Americana group? Oh, God. That's that's hard. I love Patty Griffin. I love Nico Case. I love Brandy Carlisle. I love um, okay. uh, Alabama Shakes. Okay. There you go. And, and, um, and we also like Mike Reed. And we like Mike Reed. And Sarah Schlesinger, and who Sarah wrote this Schlesinger. great musical, The Ballad of Little Joe. Yeah. You can get the album on the 10th, and, and the musical company put it out, and uh, there's a concert for mm -hmm. people below, and you get a free one if you go to the concert. Yeah. I'm going to be there. Do it. I'm totally going to be there. Thanks, Paul. Teal Wicks, I adore you. It's great I to see you. Too. Thanks for wearing green. You're welcome. See you soon. Thanks for having a cute studio. Oh, you're welcome. We did it for you. Fancy. Of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with another great guest. Thank you for watching. Bye. Peace.